we're looking at the Asus HD 797 Direct CU2. Now this thing's massively overclocked and it is completely non-reference. That's what I really like about it. So I'm gonna talk mostly about what they've done um, differently here compared to the stock design. Now, first off the basics, it's 75 megahertz um, faster, so it's 1000 megahertz, it's like the gigahertz edition. And the memory clock out of the box is 5600 megahertz. The 384 bit card, and you've got three gigabytes of GDDR5, it's the uh, specs on the back of the box. But now let's talk about what makes it so special. Now, first off, you'll notice it has a massive heatsink and two fans. Now, some people argue for days and days of which one's better, the impeller or the blower. Uh, now, one thing I do like about this one, the bearings on this fan are virtually dustproof. They've they, they put them together in a way uh, that no dust is going to get into the bearing. And that's really something that kills the life of these cars. You're still going to need to, you know, get the dust off of the physical surface, but you're not going to get any dust inside the bearings. So that makes me quite happy. This is also quite a bit um, quieter when compared to the reference design. The reference design sounded like a vacuum cleaner. I put a reference uh, 7970 in my machine and immediately took it out and gave it away. It was just, I, I couldn't play my games. Like, I would come in and Wendell would be talking to me. I'd be trying to play Skyrim. And he'd be like, who's running a vacuum cleaner? And I'd be like, oh, you're playing a video game. Uh, this one is 14 decibels quieter. And uh, it's, the one thing that's really, really cool about this, with the ginormous fans, uh, even with an overclock, the fans were running at like 40% of their max. And we were in a room here, we're testing it out on a test bench. And the room is like 72 degrees right now. So it really doesn't make a lot of noise at all. You know, 40% fan is, is fine with me, and it didn't seem to get any higher than 50%, even when it was getting a little warm. So let's talk about all the elements they used here. There's several layers here. We've got a backplate on the back, and the uh, backplate really helps to dissipate the heat. And on the front there, we've got some large fins and six copper heat pipes to make direct contact with the GPU to keep things nice and cold. Now, the other thing that's nice about this is that they use almost the exact same VRM that as you would see on like one of their high-end motherboards. So we have a 12 phase power design on this thing. And um, the capacitors on this, a lot of people they use like, you know, the solid capacitors. They use the solid capacitors, but they don't use the 2K capacitors that most people use. If you look up on most motherboards and, and most graphics cards, they use like the 2K capacitors. They're using 5K capacitors here and, and they have a much longer lifespan. So you can see they're using better parts there. We've got super alloy chokes and super alloy capacitors, super alloy MOS. And thanks to the DigiVRM, uh, there's a 30% noise reduction in the, the power that's going to the, the GPU. Also, the DigiVRM will dynamically adjust the frequency and that helps to reduce uh, the electromagnetic interference even more. It's like half of what you get with the reference design card. So all in all, guys, it's just a good card for overclocking. There's a lot of stuff that they put into this. Um, now, if you want to know exactly how to overclock this card, um, there's a separate video I'm going to make and the link will be here on the screen. It's just a video that's uh, going to show you how to use Asus's um, GPU tweak program. It's a pretty easy to use program, actually a very easy to use program. One other thing that's interesting about this, if you're really serious about overclocking, you may not want to use the uh, Windows-based tool, the GPU tweak program. Well, you can use something called VGA Hotwire, and uh, you'll need to be comfortable soldering because you have to solder uh, a few things onto your graphics card, and then there's a header on the ROG motherboard and some of the high-end Asus motherboards. And then, once you're in your UEFI, you have full control over this, just like you're overclocking your CPU, you can control uh, everything. You can control the entire DigiVRM. All the different voltage controls will be at your fingertips. So if you're an extreme overclocker and you just want, you know, you don't want that much power, you can have it. Let's do some benchmarks. Benchmark this using this motherboard, the Asus P8Z77V Pro. We have uh, 16 gigabytes of Kingston Beast memory in there. Um, we also have a 3770K as a CPU, uh, a Corsair H100, and a Seasonic 850 watt uh, power supply. It's gold certified. Now we uh, benchmark this with the graphics card overclocked to 1125, like I said. I also did some benchmarks with this, uh, with this machine overclocked as well, the CPU. And uh, I did Crossfire benchmarks on Far Cry 3 and Crisis 3, but not in this video. That's going to be in the Crisis 3 specific video. If you are interested in the uh, Crossfire benchmarks, check out that video. The link is here. Crisis 3 benchmarks. 1080p, uh, the maximum settings, all the filters turned all the way up. 21.44 frames per second. Turn those filters off, 29.80 frames per second. 1440p, that's 2560 by 1440. Um, with the max filters, everything all the way maxed out, 11.16 frames per second. And 1440 with absolutely no filters, no anisotropic filtering or anything like that, 18.36 frames per second. Crisis 3 is a destroyer of worlds. It's like, just like when Crisis 1 came out and all the graphics cards like the Mighty 7970, even have issues uh, playing it maxed out at 1080p. 
you're getting so close with no filters. And uh, on, a, on a on a screen with high pixel density, the um, removing the filters, it doesn't look that bad, guys. Someone was like, you have no idea what you're talking about because, you know, like, pixel density has nothing to do with, with filters. I understand that. But at the same time, very, very small pixels make it hard to see the jagged edges. Unless you're running 1080p and stretching it to full screen, then you really see those jagged edges. But if you're running 2560 by 1440, or if you're running, like, a windowed 1080p, it does not look that bad. So I play mine without the filters, and I was playing it at 1080p, and only once in a while does it drop below 30. So... Metro 2033 at 1080p on the max settings, 38.4 frames or 0 0.4 frames per second. 1440p, 22.44 frames per second. Moving right along to natural selection 2. 1080p at the uh, max setting with ambient occlusion and everything going crazy, 70.16 frames per second. 1440p at the maximum settings, 40.88 frames per second. Skyrim. Now we have Skyrim modded quite a bit because uh, it had a bad case of consoleitis, so we went to the PC doctor and fixed it. Now after we added all the texture mods and everything, running it at max 89.60 frames per second at 1080p, and at 1440p, the max settings again, 69.20 frames per second. Crisis Warhead. 1080p, the max settings, 64.52 frames per second. At 1440p, at the max settings, 42.44 frames per second. Trying to 1080p at the max settings, 64.80 frames per second. 1440p at the max settings, 39.72 frames per second. Finally, a GPU, a single GPU that can play trying to at 1440p at the max settings, at playable frame rates. So that makes me quite happy. All in all, this thing is loaded with features. If you're looking to overclock and you want just pretty much the best 7970 out there with you know the best features and the most durable parts on the planet earth then i i recommend this one this is the one that i'm going to be using actually i'm giving it to pistol right you're taking this one i keep trying to grab this one but i don't have three slots empty in my machine one more thing i want to touch on because this is a fat car because you guys said the noise was important so that's why if you guys want to see the rest of the benchmarks, there's several other videos on this, and you can always go to techsyndicate.com. I even did some trying to uh, crossfire tests, so I'll throw those on there as well for you guys. But until then, watch everything and subscribe. I'll see you next time.